Hey guys, Kill Stokes here. Welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. We are back and we are talking Bitcoin once again. Now, if you're not a Bitcoin fan, don't worry, don't leave the podcast. This is going to be an investment podcast as well because me personally, I'm not a big fan of Bitcoin, but I do come from an investment background and I think what's coming up soon is going to be a perfect example of my style of investing, which is a, a common sense, put the puzzle pieces style of investing versus kind of just like more of a quantitative one where you're digging through numbers and perhaps looking for statistics that you don't actually know what they mean. Now, before we get any further into the podcast, do me a favor. If you are a frequent listener and you love what you're listening to here each and every week with the Trading Coach Podcast, let me know, leave me a rating leave me a a review. It is the best way that you can support the show. Got a message from someone the other day saying that, hey, Akil, I've been listening since the beginning and just noticed that I never actually gave you a rating and they went ahead and gave me five stars. So please do that. It takes a minute, but is a massive help to us growing the show and eventually becoming the number one trading podcast out there. So what is Bitcoin halving, halving? I can never say that word, but you get what I mean. Well, Bitcoin has said since the beginning that there is a finite amount of Bitcoins that are going to be available. I think the number is like 21 million or something like that. But you crypto nerds don't, you know, don't fact check me on that. Something of that sort. And what that means is that eventually there will be, you know, all of the Bitcoins out there will be mined. And mining is the process of basically like digitally digging into the earth, computer earth and finding these Bitcoins. And what happens during these halving uh, periods is that the amount of available Bitcoin is cut in half. So this is going to be the fourth one that we have, right? It happens every four years. The first one was in 2012, I think fall of 2012. Then there was one, uh, I think, summer of 2016, one in spring 2020. And the next one is coming up either April 19th, 20th. I'm not sure if it's midnight, but somewhere around that range. And this is going to be the time when Bitcoin supply is cut in half. Now, the big question is, how does this affect the market? And there's a few ways to think about this, right? One, if we understand basic economics, by the way, basic economics, great book by Thomas Sowell. It's a a big boy. It's a thick one, Um, but it's a great book in understanding economics. It's an entire book on economics without using like numbers, which is cool because uh, economics is basically and supply and demand is relationships. So in general, when you have half, right, (laughs) when you have H-A-L-F, the supply of something, and the demand is the same. There's, there's, you know, people still want it. What that does is it drives demand up. It drives prices up because now the same amount of people want access to the thing, but there's only half of the thing available. And that in turn increases more demand because there's less. It's kind of like scarcity where, man, there's only one item left, right? You know, these infomercials to be like, hey, guys, I don't know if they do this anymore, but I'm dating myself. When I was old, I used to see all these infomercials on TV where it's like, we have this magic blender and it blends things and blah, 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 blah. But there are only nine left, so call now. And just by knowing that there are nine left, you're like, oh crap, I better call now because they're about to run out. Scarcity makes demand higher. So scarcity, lack of supply makes demand higher and it allows them to drive prices up because now where I was only willing to pay $10 for this magic blender, if I know there's only nine left and I know that John over there is willing to pay $15. Well, I might be willing to go to 20 just to get my hands on it before it runs out. So in a general basic economic kind of perspective, the halving of Bitcoin should increase the price. And historically, we've seen this kind of right. So if you read a lot of articles out there, they're probably going to tell you that the correlation is that whenever Bitcoin halves price increases for Bitcoin. But I don't actually think that's true. I I, I don't actually think the halving is the cause. If you look back at the history of Bitcoin until recently, and by recently, I mean like the last probably two or three years, it was on an incredible rise no matter what. I don't think it had anything to do with the supply or the halving or anything like that. Bitcoin was just the thing, right? If you guys remember, right? Bitcoin was the rage. Everywhere you go, people are asking about Bitcoin. People are wanting to get their hands on Bitcoin. Crypto, crypto, crypto. Celebrities are endorsing it. I just think it was a very young and a very popular, wildly popular, trendy, kind of on fire type of 
commodity, I guess if you can call it one. I don't really know how to classify it, but a, a cryptocurrency, a commodity, I guess. So I think that whether it was halved or not, because there was so much demand for it, prices were going to increase no matter what. After Bitcoin kind of matured and kind of the, the whole flashiness weared off of it, we actually saw Bitcoin decrease in value and we saw it go kind of flat like a normal regular currency for quite a while. And until recently, right? Recently, and I shared with you this podcast episode um, a couple months ago, earlier in the year, recently we saw some major news for Bitcoin. This was the approval of the Bitcoin ETF. By the way, Ethereum may be next to get approved for an ETF. So for you investors out there, the same thing I told you about Bitcoin, go back to that episode. I told you that it will most likely rise and we have. <laughs> um, check out Ethereum as well for that if that ETF gets approved. But the recent approval of the ETF, which is a lower risk way for the casual investor to get their hands on some Bitcoin and not in a kind of physical slash digital sense, but in a, in a safer type of way, that made Bitcoin rally as well. And, and we've seen a rally since then. So if we do half and prices continue to go up, Again, it isn't necessarily the cause of increased price. I think the cause was already there. This just happened to kind of be around while it was happening. It's kind of like that, you know, a random person walking down the street while a celebrity comes and just throws money out the car. It just right place, right time. They did nothing on their behalf to make it happen. They just happened to be there. So the question is, who actually benefits from this half? And the answer is someone you may not think. And I guess there's two sides of this coin, right? This is the, I guess this is the reality of life. Someone wins, someone loses, right? Trading isn't necessarily a zero sum game, but uh, it, it, can, it can feel that way sometimes. So the miners are gonna be the ones that benefit or burn to the ground. And think about it like this. So again, Bitcoin miners are like these, you know, they, they are, are they're energy companies, I guess, energy uh, tech companies that, invest in these mining farms, right? So imagine like a computer version of people and they, I don't know the, the details of what they do to mine, but they go through this process of coding and decoding and looking and blah, 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 and use a lot of energy and destroy the planet to do so. But what they come up with is Bitcoins. And just like anything else, there are these major companies out there, the big boys, and then there are these minor farms and these minor companies out there as well, the smaller ones. Well, when Bitcoin gets halved, and the quantity of or supply of Bitcoin is cut in half, that means there's gonna be less Bitcoin to find. And what you're gonna see is this, you're gonna see a great divide, kind of what's happening in America right now, where there is an upper class that's getting richer, a lower class that's getting poorer, a middle class that is going to disappear and all war is gonna break out, especially heading into another election year where we don't have any quality candidates running. <sighs> anyway, we'll save that for later. Um, what you're going to see is this divide. You're going to see the smaller companies say, you know what? It's not worth it. We are spending all of this money keeping the lights on to mine for these Bitcoins. Because the same quantity isn't available, we are getting less for our, our, um, our effort. And that less for their effort will probably not be enough to keep the lights on. So they're going to have to go out of business. The major companies, right, because they're 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 bigger, they're going to be able to withstand that. And what they will do, and like many businesses, the major ones will actually absorb the little ones. They'll say, hey, you got your infrastructure already in place. You are competition in a sense. So what we're going to do is we're just going to buy you up. Here's some money. Take this money. We now own your blah, 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 blah. And that bigger company becomes bigger and, 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 and grabs a bigger percentage of the Bitcoin mining pie, right? Um, it's kind of a win-win for both because the smaller ones are probably going to go broke anyway, right? It's just, it, it's it, it's an eventuality, right? Bitcoin is going to keep getting halved until it reaches this certain number. Again, 21 mil. Once that 21 mil has been achieved, it, it's over. So, you know, it, it's, you're going to go, you're, you're, you're going to go out of business at some point anyway. So you might as well get a payoff and do it. So I don't necessarily think it's a, a negative for these companies. It just is the reality of, of, of many things in life. But so knowing that information, the play is this. If we're gonna have, I'm make, making up random numbers here just so you can kind of visualize it. If we're gonna have, let's say, if, if there were 10, because it's a nice number, if there were 10 mining companies out there, right, mining Bitcoin, and let's say five are big and five are small, 
if those five small ones are going to go out of business and get absorbed, eaten alive by the bigger ones, if there's two or three of those big ones eating those small ones, again, they have a bigger percentage of the pie. So the play might be to do this. And I don't know anything about these companies, but if you're somebody that's into crypto, right, in technology, research these companies, find out what the biggest, baddest Bitcoin mining companies are out there, see which ones that are financially stable and have the ability to absorb smaller companies and invest in them. Because if this half happens, that's a tough thing to say, half happens, if this half happens, and eventually they do go and absorb these companies, giving them a greater market share, that can be beneficial to their stock price. And boom, you've found a way to make money off of that. So those are just my thoughts here. Again, I'm not a crypto expert at all, but again, this is my investment mind thinking. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any opinions out there. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, I'll leave a little uh, Q&A thing underneath. So feel free to share your opinions and appreciate you guys listening. Until next time, plan your trade, trade your plan. Take care. Now, before you go, just a reminder, share this episode with your social community. And remember, leave me a rating and a review. We do three episodes a week. I love getting topics like this to discuss, but I don't get them unless you guys leave your feedback. And typically, newer members of the podcast leave the most feedback because they're new and excited and they want to hear my opinion. So keep sharing, keep caring, and I'll see you guys next time.